Hi everyone, I'm Tom, and today I'm going to be playing Flick 'em Up Dead of Winter, which is going to be a bit of a strange one to film. We've kind of got this angle. Hopefully this is going to work out okay. I thought, you know, me trying to hold the camera while flicking things is going to be very strange. So this is a dexterity game. Uh, I haven't played Flick 'em Up myself, but it was a, you know, a Cowboys game, team versus team flicking bullets at each other. This is kind of, it's still got that, it's still got some team versus team stuff, but it's also got cooperative, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be doing the first scenario of uh, Flick'em Up Dead of Winter. So this is that scenario in the book. It tells us how to set it up. I've roughly got that set up there. I just need to put the survivors on their spaces. And it tells you all sorts of things. It tells you how many rounds you've got left, and it tells you where to, how many zombies to put in the bin, which heroes to use, uh, our objective is basically to have three or fewer zombies on the map and one person needs to get into the RV, which is there. The first survivor to get into the camper will be the driver and we can't use them again. If any zombies touch the camper or its support blocks, we lose immediately. Uh, we win if we complete the, jet the objective. We lose if three or more survivors are dead and if the round marker meets reaches the skull. Now, I think I'm going to have to do a bit of a mixture of uh, tripod and not tripod. So this is the RV and it's counting our rounds. We start off on the two and a half there and if it gets to the skull, we lose. Also, these are the heroes we'll be playing with. Marcy's just looking after them. Uh, we've got Anita who has a knife and a shotgun. Everyone has two health. Thomas has a gun. Loretta has a gun. John has just a knife. Kevin has a gun and a shotgun. And we will hopefully be fending off the zombies as best we can. So we take it in turns. On a player's turn, you will pick a survivor that hasn't gone yet. You will know because of their backpacks. I'll show you this. They have backpacks on and the rule book tells you which way they need to start up. You choose one that has still got black at the top of the backpack. And when you have finished their move, you flip them over to show that they're finished and ready for the next round. So I am going to be choosing Anita because she has the shotgun and I would like to use that. OK, so I'm going to try and move Anita into a good position. For this, I need the movement disc, and it's got this line on the top of it. I need to replace Anita with the movement disc, and then I need to move it, if, you know, wherever I want it, but I can't touch anything. If I touch anything whatsoever, the movement has failed. And so it's a Subutio flick as well, if you haven't uh, played Flick 'em Up, just with the finger, not the finger and thumb. Uh, so I'm going to be trying my best to come in this general area and then try and shotgun some of these zombies over here. So let's see how this goes. That's quite a nice position, I think. Can you see that? No, you can't see anything because the ice cream truck's in the way. Let's just uh, let's move that temporarily because uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to be... It's not going to be in my way just yet. So we now replace the movement disc with Anita, because if this had been my second action, I would have to place her facing in the direction of the line that's on the disc. But because it's my first action, I can face her any way I like. So to use the shotgun, it has this little guide here. So you use these small bullets, you use four of them for the shotgun, and you place them in the guide, not uh, straight, you kind of zigzag them a little bit. And then, Try your best to flick them at the zombies. Okay, I think we're going to try for the closer up guys. Let's see how we do here. So one, surely I can get. <laughs> kind of a weak shotgun shot there. I'm not the best at that. So anything you knock over that isn't a zombie gets stood back up. And the zombie is done for if it was hit by that or it was hit by the ricochet of a shotgun. Uh, that's special just for the shotgun. Grab all of the bullets and get them out of the way. And the zombie you kill can actually be posted in the back of this zombie bin here, and he might come out later. Okay, two actions is all you get, so she is done with. So we flip her backpack over to show that she is not usable until the next round. Get the shotgun out of the way. Now, <laughs> this might be where things go wrong for Anita. So she did a loud action. There are loud and quiet actions in this. If she'd just moved or maybe she'd used a knife or something, that would have been a quiet action and things wouldn't have been quite so bad. But this is a loud action she did. So we find the nearest zombie to her. Uh, it's probably, oh, I can't really tell. It's probably this one. You grab the zombie tower and place it behind that zombie. Then pick it up, see what number it is. It's number eight and you stand it on number eight on the zombie tower. Then find the two zombies closest to that one. Okay, and now we just pull the support away and see how far they go. 
Not very far at all. But they might stand up later and they are advancing slowly on us. And if they knock us over, they do a point of damage. We've only got two health. I think next we're going to get Kevin and his rifle. Let's uh, replace him with the disc. Okay, let's see where he is going to end up. <laughs> not, not, not very far. But he gets to use the rifle, which is similar. You take a normal bullet, which is one of these larger black discs, and you place it in the rifle. And it kind of, it's just the same as shooting a gun, except it's a bit more guided because it's coming out of this guide. That's why they call it that, probably. So I'm going to try and do a bit of a trick shot and hit this zombie here. Let's see how well we do that. So we're all zoomed in. This is the moment of truth. There we go. We got him. <laughs> I hope that looked good. I was too busy staring at the zombies. So he is done for. He can get posted in the box. So now the closest standing zombie is this one here. So again, we put the tower behind him and he is number nine. Again, shooting any type of gun is a loud action. So two of his friends are gonna join him. Number seven and number six. So that's where they are. They are vaguely you know, pointing in his direction. There he is. So let's see where they end up. Oh getting very close to him. I'm almost forgetting something here. Once you have lined them up on the tower, you stand all zombies that are already in the city. So you decide which ones are going up before you stand anything up, then you stand everything else up, and then, you know, because you can't shoot them if they're lying down, so it uh, hinders you, as we found out in our first game, if you don't stand them all up. But now these are all lying on the floor, and he's done two actions now, so... Oh, he's... He's here all knocked down. What did he get knocked down by? I didn't notice. Did he get knocked down by a zombie? And then the zombie bounced back? Seems a long way. So Kevin tried a bit too hard and unfortunately he has lost a health. And the zombie tower goes back. So the zombie tower is what, uh, what enables this to be cooperative really. Uh, the zombies are advancing towards you all the time and are potentially hitting back. I think next we're going to take Thomas. Yeah, you can't really see them from these angles, can you? Uh, we're going to take Thomas. This is how you see it when you play, though. We're going to take Thomas, and I think he's going to try and come up in this direction and try and shoot one of these zombies around the barrel, because I just thought we don't really want to group together in case all of the zombies manage to knock us all over and do a load of damage. Okay, that hasn't touched anything, so we... I should replace him before I pick it up, shouldn't I? <laughs> and just guess where he was. So... He's kind of at a good angle there to try and shoot. So we take a normal bullet, it goes either side of him, and we try and hit. Okay, there we technically hit two things. You know, the falling zombie hits somebody else. Unfortunately for me, the one that's hit by the bullet dies. But the one that got knocked over stays where it is, but stands up. So this guy is done for. He gets posted in the little zombie letterbox. And this guy's finished now. So he tried his hand at a loud action. And the closest zombie is right here. So we put the tower behind. Grab these guys. Number two. Five. And nine. And get the bullet out of the way. And let's see what havoc they cause. So they didn't hit anyone yet. They are advancing though. Oh, and these, I always forget, these guys need to stand up. So they're getting closer and closer to us. We have managed to thin them out. One, two, three, four, five, six left on the table. Okay, we have Loretta and John left. Loretta has a gun, John has a knife. John's gonna have a go with his knife. He is going to try and move a bit closer because we all need to advance towards the RV anyway. So let's see how far he goes. Hmm, that's quite close, maybe a bit too close, we'll see. So he's gonna face this way and he is gonna try and use a knife. So when you get the knife, you need to stand it roughly where you would um, put the bullet and flick it from standing. So I'm gonna try and get this zombie. There we go. 
Hopefully uh, you saw that. So he is finished off just in the same way. The knife works exactly the same way. He gets posted into the little letterbox. But that means that moving and using a knife are a quiet action. So who is doing the knifing? This guy. Closest zombie to him is this one, who is fallen. If it had been a standing zombie, what does this guy count as? <laughs> Uh, if he had been a, um, a, a standing zombie, he would go on top of the tower and by himself he would advance. But since the closest one is fallen, we just stand him up. And also twist his backpack to show that he is done. So we have one left, and that is Loretta, who has a gun. I think she's going to try and come up this way as well and see if she can attack him. So let's see her attempting to move. Okay, that's not going to put her in the best position. <laughs> Although the bullet can go this way. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, let's take the camera out of my hands. So Loretta is going to try and avoid the one doing a handstand and <laughs> hit the zombie next to him, but also try and avoid her fellow survivors. Oh, that doesn't count. So this zombie was uh, not standing up. So it didn't hit, so just stands up, and the other one that was knocked over stands up, unfortunately. And that was a loud action, so Loretta could be causing a lot of trouble here. So we grab the nearest zombies. The tower is designed to go over the top of things, which is quite nice. So this is the closest one, number nine. This barrel might protect us a little bit. Next nearest standing is number two. This was a loud action, remember? And next nearest standing is all the way back here, number six. So this one's progressing quite a way. So let's see what happens. Ah, they knock the barrel over, but thankfully not us. Uh, also, the one that the tower is on top of stands up. That one should have stood up before I pulled it out, but she's underneath the tower, so I'll do it now. Okay, so that's the end of the round. We need to move the marker along here to show that we haven't got that much time left. Then you need to stand all the zombies that are currently in play and add new zombies. So we are just about to start a day. That's signified by the fact that the round we're starting is blue. So if we take a look at the zombie bin, it has these lovely little uh, numbers hanging off it. So before a day starts, we need to grab two zombies out of the bin and do a zombie rush with them with the tower in its home position here. Okay, so we've got two more zombies coming in. And now it's time to do all of that again. So who had the shotgun? What number is she? Number one has the shotgun. She's right here. Should she try and hit these? I think she should at least try. She's got two shots. Okay, let's see how this goes. There we go. Anything hit by a ricochet on a shotgun shell? Oh no, have I not got them in shot? Did I knock them out of shot? I hope you saw that. It was, uh, it was actually had some power in that shotgun for a change. I took out two zombies with that shotgun so they can get posted and I need to go and find those bullets. I think for her next action, she's going to try and make it into the RV. So let's replace her with a disc. because She could be the driver. We've only got four zombies on the, on, the, on the map at the moment. This is the introductory mission, by the way. Oh, that was a terrible shot. I failed, so I go back where I was. And the nearest standing zombie is actually really close and could really cause some uh, trouble for Kevin. So that is number six. Luckily, there are only three standing zombies, so number two. And this one comes all the way over here. And so she should be there. And she is done. So I have a feeling that Kevin might take the brunt of this. Yes, Kevin takes a damage. Kevin has already taken a damage though. So, well, well, he's killed basically. Uh, everything else stands up. Okay, I think John's gonna go next, Mr. Knife. There is a special rule where if you are within one movement disc of a zombie, you can just spend an action to kill it and it counts as if you've used your weapon. So John will do his first action, a quiet one, to kill this zombie. Then he's gonna go back to his knife and he's gonna have to try and take out one of these standing ones. It's this one, although he's doing a bit of uh, a bit of breakdancing, he is fallen as well. 
So let's uh, let's try and set it up so we can see it. Oh, does that count as knocking it over? It, it caused him to lean over. Uh, I'm going to say that caused him to fall. I'm not sure if that counts. But we are having it. All we need to do is get someone into the RV. So he's done with. And he did a quiet action, didn't he? Now the closest zombie to him is this one here that's fallen, so he is going to stand up. Next, I think we're going to have Thomas, who's up in this corner. He is going to try and do some moving. I want to kind of put him here and then, well, I'll show you the RV if he manages to get around this area. That's quite nice. Okay, it's all on this. Uh, the tripod is kind of in my way, so if I miss, it's, it's that, isn't it? It's not me. There we go. As soon as you go past the imaginary line that's made in the kind of archway of the building, you have made it into the building. So he is into the RV. We have three or fewer zombies. And yes, uh, we have managed to win the introductory scenario. Uh, there are five uh, cooperative scenarios in the game and five competitive scenarios. Uh, all sorts of things get added. You know, these are the first things to get added in this, uh, in this scenario here, the shotgun and the rifle you see for the first time, and then you start being able to go into buildings and all sorts of things. But I'll talk about some of those things in the uh, first impressions. If you'd like to know what I think, then you can click the link somewhere around here. But I uh, hope that gives you a rough idea of what Flick'em Up Dead of Winter is like. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.